Derek Gatherer is a virologist. He joins us from Lancaster in the United Kingdom. Thank you for joining us on the program. You know, we've seen the first Good case afternoon. of a newborn becoming infected with the virus being diagnosed just a few hours um, after being born. The mother reportedly also has coronavirus. So how would the mother transmit the virus to the baby in this case? Many organisms can uh, cross the placenta, many viruses can cross the placenta, so it, it's not entirely unexpected that, that the baby would also be uh, um, suffering with the virus, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. We're seeing the death toll increase, but also the number of people who have recovered from the coronavirus um, is more than 1,300. Are we seeing most of the deaths in people who are elderly or with weakened immune systems, uh, possibly with underlying illnesses, and is it reasonable to assume that someone who is in generally good health would have a good chance of recovering from the coronavirus? In general, with respiratory viruses, uh, not just with coronaviruses, but also with influenza and other things, it will be the, the elderly, the, the very young, the very old, uh, those with underlying medical conditions, especially those with, with uh, breathing problems, with chest conditions that will constitute most of the fatal cases. Uh, in this particular outbreak, our, our death rate has been declining slightly, but not by very much. We're, we, we were on about 2.5% uh, case fatality rate. We're now down to about 2%. Um, it's important, though, to be careful with that figure because that, that's 2% of the confirmed cases. And the confirmed cases tend to be the more serious ones. In order to become a confirmed case, you have to be tested, usually in a hospital, which usually means you've already got pneumonia. So the, the true risk to the general population isn't as high uh, as 2%. Um, one thing which is worth mentioning, though, is that in 2009, when we had the swine flu uh, epidemic, the swine flu pandemic in 2009, the equivalent figure was one8 so this, this new virus seems to be more or less about the same as the swine flu pandemic flu in terms of its clinical severity. Uh, so if we do have a pandemic, we have to be prepared for something with the kind of clinical impact that we had in 2009. Right. I wanted to ask you about the um, reported cases. Right now it's over 28,000. Um, but as you um, said, that that's probably people who are uh, more seriously ill and who are in the hospital. So do you think that the number of actual cases could be um, far higher and people just aren't um, reporting that they're sick and not going to the hospital and just have a, a, um, a less serious version of the coronavirus? Yes, we've, we've suspected, uh, even as long ago as two weeks ago, we suspected that there were a lot of undiscovered cases in the community in China, simply because the number of travel-related cases was so high. So if you look at the, the, the number of, of cases that have appeared in, in foreign countries from air travel and other kinds of travel, and, and you know the, the number of people that have traveled in that time span, which is available from, from airline records and, and so forth, then you can calculate the incidence of the disease in the traveler population and it turned out very early on in the outbreak that that figure was much higher than the suspected incidence in the population. That strongly suggested that we had a lot of cases in the population that, that hadn't come to light and that probably 90% or more of actual uh, virus cases in the population never, never reached the medical authorities. These are people that are having much milder symptoms uh, and are, are, are suffering at home and recovering at home. All right, we'll leave it there. Derek Gatherer joining us from Lancaster in the United Kingdom.